tonight. Our last storyteller tonight, Lee Jolie. Where is she? Come on, one more time for Lee Jolie. Can I say it right? Um, when I was in my 20s, I had a very strained relationship with my English mother. Um, and the reason for this was because um, I basically had no relationship with my Afro-Trinidadian father because when I was one, my mother took my sister and I, left the Caribbean where they were living and moved back to England and completely cut him off. She didn't want even child support from him because she hated him that much. And uh, the reason that my mother despised my father with such passion was because he had cheated on her, not once, but multiple times during their short marriage. And I would have totally sympathized with that fact had it not been for the fact that my mother knew that my father was a cheater before they got married. She had found you know, lots of Polaroid photographs of naked women in their flat in London, and, uh, but still decided to go through with the wedding. And for me, as a 20-year-old pseudo-feminist girl, um, to me, that just meant that my mother was one of these weak, delusional women that thought that she could change the man by marrying him. Um, so then, cut to 10 years later, I'm uh, you know, pregnant, I'm married, and I'm on vacation at my Italian in-law's place, and they introduced me to a friend of theirs called Fabrizio. Now, Fabrizio was a very fabulous makeup artist in Milan, and then he was involved in a terrible car accident in which he was, um, he was left in a coma for three months. And when he came out of the coma, he discovered that he had the gift, which basically meant that he would walk into a room like this, and he would hear all these spirits talking to him, telling him that he needed to relay some message to a total stranger in the room, and he'd have to decide whether or not he was going to tell the person that or not. And I thought was, this was fascinating. So I make the mistake of telling my mother this story when she catches me on Skype. And she begs, please, can you ask Fabrizio about you know, my father, my grandfather, who'd passed away about 10 years earlier. Can you please find out how he's doing? And I really didn't want to ask Fabrizio anything at all because I, you know, I thought it was a load of bollocks, honestly. Um, but I, I also didn't want my mother buzzing in my ear all vacation like a spirit. Do you know what I mean? So I was like, okay, I prom I'll ask him. I'll ask him. So that, the next morning, I, I see Fabrizio tanning by my in-law's pool. And uh, I go up to him and I say, listen, you know, do you think you could find out my, my grandfather for my mum? You know? And he basically said, well, it's going to be hard because your mother's not here and I need her energy, but... I'll see what I can do. And then he asked for the name of my mother and the name of my grandfather. And then I forgot about it for the rest of the day. Then that evening, Fabrizio comes to find me. And he basically says, look, uh, I just need, I've got, I have a message, I have a message, but I just need to double check some facts before I, I give it to you, presumably to make sure it was the right spirit giving this message, you know? And he goes, um, he goes, and then we, we sit down on the, on the couch and we start this conversation that's half mine because neither of us speak each other's languages well. So Fabrizio says, um, he goes, um, eh, tuo nonno era un uomo alto, sì. So your grandfather, he was a tall man, right? Um, my grandfather was six foot one, so that was tall for his generation and tall by Italian standards, so I say, sì. Then he goes, eh, eh, tuo nonno, Avevo una cosa strana con i suoi capelli. So your, your, dad, your grandfather, he had something weird with his hair. And my grandfather did. He had a comb over. So I was like, see, sí, see. Sí. Like, no, a lot less skeptical now, you know. And then he goes, uh, tuo nonno, avevo una cosa strana con i suoi occhi sinistro. Fatto così, così. And it, so you, but your grandfather, his left eye, there's something strange with his left eye. And my grandfather had a lazy left eye, you know, so you didn't know if he was actually talking to you, looking at you or someone else across the room. So I'm like, see, see, like this, like now convinced, you know, believe it now. And he goes, uh, well, then he explains, he says, your grandfather has a message for your mother. He wants her to know that she's, he's fine, that she doesn't need to worry about him. But most importantly, that he, she needs to know that he never understood her. He never understood her choices, but he always, always loved her. 
So I'm, you know, grateful for this message and I thank him, you know, thanks, great, I'll tell her, great, awesome, you know. And then he says, but there's something else. Uh, you, have, uh, you have two siblings, correct? And so I say, well, yeah, I have two younger siblings. I have a sister from the same parents and then I have a younger brother, half-brother in Trinidad that I haven't met yet. And he's like, no, you have two, you have two siblings from the same parents you have an older brother and a younger sister. And I'm like, and he's like, it's okay, ciao, ciao. And then leaves for the day. Like, I'm like, okay. So that evening, I get on Skype to my mom and I tell her the message and she starts crying, you know, with joy, you know. Because what Fabrizio didn't know was that my grandfather was a, an establishment English gentleman. He went to Cambridge, he studied law, he rode crew for England in the 1932 Olympics. And it was also like the president of one of the big rowing clubs in England. But my mum was this child of the 60s. She left England, disobeyed him, and went to San Francisco to protest against Vietnam. And there she met and fell in love with an African-American musician. You know, they had nothing in common at all. So, um, but anyway, so I tell her that what the message is from the, my grandfather. She cries, she thanks me, she's feeling so much better. And then I say, you know... Fabrizio said something else that was a little bit odd. He, uh, he said that I have two siblings, that I have an older brother. You know, what can you tell me about that? To this, my mum starts crying again, but this time it's not tears of joy. You know, it's, you know. So when she, when she finally recovers enough to start you know, talking again, she basically says... When I was dating your father, I accidentally got pregnant. And uh, that's why we got engaged, and that's why I married him and moved to Trinidad. And then I had a miscarriage. Well, I was obviously horrified because I got my mother all wrong. I mean, England was a horribly racist place in the 70s. And if she didn't marry him, she would have been a, a single white woman with an illegitimate colored child she would have been an outcast in society. And so she did the most profound and brave thing that she could have done, which was, and selfless, she married a man who didn't love her, you know, moved to a country that she didn't know, away from her friends and family, all to protect her unborn child. And um, so, I, you know, that was my discovery that my mother is a hero. That, that's it, thank you. <laughs>